Oh, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to Arre Dendi Abri Azi Aro. Um, turn on season three, episode a two. So the situation. All right, let me just get you right to the start. Let me just boom. All right, black screen. You're like, what is this? This is the beginning of our rewatch shopping list. Okay, I have season two up. This is season two, episode one. Right? Look at um Petra. She's not a maid yet. All right, this is early game situation. Um, I'm gonna go through season two right now and hit every spot that I needed a refresher on. So immediately I know this episode has, quote, Regulus jump scene in it. Um, we got the full list of things we're gonna look for. I'm gonna be doing a lot of cutting as I find what I'm looking for. Uh, and we're just gonna remember what's going on so that we can be ready for it. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of shit that's already hitting the fan in season three, episode one, right? Regulus showing up out of nowhere. Um, the Wrath Lady, what's her name, like Sirius or something? Why so serious? You know, that whole situation, uh, among, like, you know, and like, uh, freaking, uh, uh, Reinhardt and the Asteria family drama with the dad. I mean, there's like a million things going on. So we're going to start with the season two recap. Then I'm going to go into comments slash translation updates for season three, episode one. Then I'm going to go into season three, episode two. Then we're going to watch it. I'm pretty sure there's a no, new OP because guess what? Your boys also got the um, OP lyrics video. So we're going to look at the lyrics. We're going to be busy. Okay. We got to, <laughs> I'm going to be here for like 10 hours. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. So we're starting. This is the Regulus jump scene. So we need to remember what the heck is going on. What's Regulus's power here? Let's see. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty bad. His power is just, you're dead now. <laughs> His power is just, all of you are dead. Okay. Oh, the arm? That's kind of crazy, actually. So he's Gojo. He just has, like, a barrier, right? It looks like a barrier that, like, hurts people that gets close to it. He's talking about his right to free speech. Wait, did this just cut? <gasps> wait, her arm just got chopped off. <laughs> oh my, wait, 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 who did that? Oh, does he have like a telekinesis? Or maybe he was just really fast and cut it. No, no, that's probably what that was. Cause it's, that's probably what that was. Just kidding. It was probably just Gladney doing a little chop chop. All right, so that, that, that explains, that's good, that's good. I, I, I think that mostly made sense to me. The, what that explains is why nobody recognized Regulus is because nobody was there except for Krush and Rem. Rem is comatose, Krush had her memories eaten. So both of them got hoed. Um, it is notable that they pretty much completely won the fight, um, but Gluttony only ate Krush's memories as opposed to making everybody forget about Krush. So that's notable, right? The, they didn't want to interrupt the election because if they wanted, they could have either killed her Oh, now one of the candidates is dead. Or they could have eaten her memory or eaten everyone's memory of her like they did to Rem. Um, and then, you know, everybody would be like, what do you mean? There's only four people in the royal election, you know? Um, and maybe that would have caused some crazy things down the road. But they didn't want that. They wanted very specifically for her to be like, they wanted to kneecap her and not completely remove her from the playing field. So, interesting. Um, then that's all depressing. Cool, okay. Check. Regulus jump scene, checked off the list. Next up, we got either, we got a couple things. We got Wilhelm, well, family, Wilhelm's wife, family drama, death. Um, that to me was already clarified a little bit in the Discord. Shout out the Discord, link in the description. Um, because I was a little confused because they said, they, they explicitly, Reinhard was blamed for it. And so I thought, I, I thought maybe there was something in the scene that I missed. Apparently, we don't know what's going on there yet. That's, that's still like a, a question mark a little bit. Um, my kind of guess, my hypothesis for why Reinhard was blamed for the death of Wilhelm's wife, uh, Theresia, or however you pronounce that, is because I think, because Wilhelm was busy off doing something else with like the kidnapping. I think Reinhard as a child, I know this is crazy, but I think Reinhard as a child was maybe sent in to fight the whale instead of Wilhelm and then lost the battle. My reason for thinking that, because you might be like, um, why would they send in like a seven-year-old to do that? Because he was probably like seven or eight at the time or something. Because brother literally has all of the blessings of that anyone has ever had. He's literally the goat of being OP, you know? So I think, because I mean, think about it. Otto as a child, um, 
could do the animal speaking thing, which is a divine blessing or whatever, right? So that means uh, Reinhard as a child also would have had at least a, most of his blessings, if maybe not like all of them, I don't really know how it works, but at least a substantial amount of his blessings were probably well known by his family at the time. So I wouldn't be surprised if he was being trained as a child to fight and was really, really OP because of the blessings and therefore was sent in when Wilhelm was gone as like a really early test of metal slash we just need somebody to go fight the whale and then failed. That's my hypothesis, um, but I have no idea. So I, I don't feel the need to check that scene though. Um, serious potential connection to Beetlejuice slash witch cult. I need to find Amelia's memories. Let me just scroll through a couple episodes. This part was my favorite part of all of ReZero. Can I just say that? My favorite part, oh wait, was it this? My favorite part of ReZero was Subaru talking to all of the different, it's not this episode. Um, Subaru talking to all of the different witches in the witches tea party. That is my favorite part of all of ReZero, bro. I'm not even gonna lie. Because it was like, and I'll just let me nerd out real quick. It was literally different sins, which are like big concepts, big abstract concepts. And each of the different sins were made personified. And then each of them had to like give an opinion or a take on Subaru's situation. And so we got like a myriad of different responses and opinions onto a very complicated situation by abstract concepts. And that is fascinating, you know? And the absolute, my favorite part of all of that um, was Typhon saying like he should be allowed to kill himself. That's crazy. But it's like, what a genius way to write pride, you know? All of these different ones just being like, like this whole scene is just so overwhelming because we're all so scared of um, Satela, bro. Like, but then it's just, they're all chatting with us and they're all just pulling him different directions and Ekadonio just starts tripping our mind out, bro. Yeah, I just absolutely love that scene. Okay, what else are we looking for? I'll suffice with Garfield, Amelia family backstory. Um, one of the things I can talk about is everything we know about the previous isekais, right? Because we know a little bit about that shit. Um, this episode is the one I was talking about where they start fighting each other. Right there. <laughs> Typhon, my goat, bro. He made his own choice. Stay out of the way is so crazy to say. Oh, dude, this shit is so peak. It's just like the, the lines being drawn is so interesting. And Sekhmet jumps in and says, nah, I'm with him. He should be allowed to do that. Cause it's such a, it's such a complicated position, you know? Should someone be allowed to like hurt themselves or, or end their own life? Yeah, so I just, best part of all of ReZero for me. I'm gonna say it once and I'll say it again. That's been my absolute favorite. Why is the name of episode 14 of season two just straight bet? Bet! You know what I mean? Okay, let me just shut up and I'll edit, I'll edit this out. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is important. All right, I found something that's important. So this is Garfield and his mom. So we, I'm gonna just rewatch this because this is obviously very important now. Okay, I promise I'll bring your father back. Just wait until then. All right, well, you failed to do that and you went and had more children in the Lake City. So, El Mom, can, like, I like, uh, I, yeah, that, that, that's a promise that did not, you left here to find happiness. So he thought it was selfish. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's the, the point of this scene is that Garfield thought it was selfish with you left to find happiness. Um, which meant that he wasn't enough to be ha to make her happy or some shit, right? That's probably why he was punching himself as a baby. Something like that. And then she's like, then he gets revealed that he was loved, um, but she wanted to go find the dad. Um, she left the sanctuary for her family's sake. But the, the, the problem with that is that like, her promise was to go find the dad, but then she just goes and settles down in another city. It, it seems to be, so she gave up on that promise, right? So that's, that's something, you know what I mean? I mean, Garf, let, it probably made things easier believing that she didn't love us. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, okay. That's, really depressing all right cool um 
Yeah, got you. All right, so not 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 more to that scene that's needed. I think I think the important thing is that she went to she claims she went to go find a dad, but she did not do that. Um, and she seems to have chilled out and done her own thing in another city, which isn't a good look. But maybe she can explain herself. Okay, this is my this is Fortuna, right? Um, Fortuna is currently who I'm guessing serious Romani Conti is. Um, either her or her possessed corpse or something of the sort. Um, just because we saw Sirius had elf ears, had purple eyes, though somebody in the Discord shot of the Discord pointed out that Fortuna's eyes are actually a different shape than Sirius's. But, it, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah. But if, if, not, if nothing else, Sir, Sirius is definitely in this crowd or something similar. Sirius is definitely an elf that I'm willing to bet a lot of money on is connected to um, Amelia, because the purple eyes plus the elf ears, and then Romani Conti is obviously the Beetle Goose connection, right? Um, what happened to Fortuna? That, 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 that's what we got to figure out, okay? That's our question right now. What happened to Fortuna, okay? They're hugging, they're happy. <gasps> Regulus shows up. That's right, I forgot about this. See, this is why we go back. This is why we go back and check. Um, and Regulus is very kind to say, this is the first time we've ever seen each other. Thank you, Regulus, for establishing a timeline here. Yeah, so Regulus shows up. Um, there is a minor plot point, and I remember somebody talking about this, how Amelia didn't recognize Regulus in season three, episode one, despite having seen, but despite this. Um, and that's somewhat fair, but also I... You know, it, I, it you know, I think it's fair that it just didn't work. You know what I mean? But she, out of everyone in the group, she's the only one that could recognize Regulus, and she failed the history check. Yeah, because I could see a situation where, like, like didn't Fortuna and Beetlegoose, like, want to bang Loki on the Schleazy? I'm not crazy, right? They definitely had something going on. So for Sirius to have Romani Conti makes me think that it's Fortuna. But we're, I've already said that, so let's stop pushing that. Regulus, oh my goodness, I didn't have his last name written down. Holy crap, write that down. Corneus. Okay. <laughs> Regulus, don't make that sound again, please. Yeah, this is him going fine. I'll I'll do a I'll get up in that business. Give me some of that sin. <laughs> <coughs> Ooh, the purple glint in his eye goes really hard right here, because purple has always been like connected to like I mean, literally, look, like, the, the invisible hand is, like, has an outline of purple, so he's, like, a purple glint in his eye. All right, good shit. Flugel? What are we talking about? Isn't Flugel the Flugel's tree? Isn't he one of the Isekai people? Wait, was... Oh, my goodness. Why is he saying Flugel here? <coughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know. Why is he talking about Flugel? I don't even remember who Flugel is that well. Flugel, not Flagelio. Flugel. Oh my gosh, I'm missing a little something here. That's fine. Okay. But then now he goes sin mode. <laughs> and it works on Regulus. Damn, Beetlegoose. Damn. Okay, so. Sorry, I just was silent for like 10 whole minutes freaking just figure out what's going on. So, Fortuna died by getting Spear through the chest. That's not good for the theory because Sirius has burns across her entire body, it looks like. The only thing that's even remotely close to burns that happened in Amelia's backstory is the plague-bearing serpent with Archie. Because Archie, look at this. This looks like a burn, doesn't it? But I don't really know. I mean, it's a disease, so I'm not sure if a burn is exactly what's going on. Like, maybe there's a world that f it is Fortuna, and she got, you know, killed in the way she gets killed, and then the plague-bearing be mob beast shows up and, like, consumes her body, and then her plague-ridden, messed-up body gets, you know, Pandora's like, here you go, here's some wrath or some something. Um, but yeah, we're not really exactly cooking in this department a ton. We're just a little confused, but that's exactly what we would expect uh, out of this. Okay, so, good. Serious potential connection to Beetle Goose slash Witch Cult. We're still unsure, but we know that it's definitely there because Romani Conti. Um, 
We need to figure out Puck and the Crystal. We need to figure out Pandora. I still don't know what to do with. We need to figure out Julius and Subaru's last engagement. When even was that? That was probably in the last episode, yeah? We'll just cook with that. Um, This is just... Uh, whatever's going on there. I'm not really bothered by that. That's just... um, Freaking... Uh, What's his name? This guy, freaking clown guy. That's just clown guy doing clown guy things. Uh, why am I forgetting Roswell's name? Oh yeah, his name's Roswell. I just had to say that out loud. Okay. Then we have Elsa and we have to do the Elsa fight. So I want to look back on the Elsa fight because it's a big part of Garfield's character right now is like the trauma from that. Oh, look at this. We're getting more flashbacks. This is why Fortuna and Beetle Goose I thought wanted to bang. They definitely want to bang. Which is why I think the serious Romani Conti makes sense. Ow! Good catch. Yeah, 100%. Um, but yeah, there's just a nice little picnic. Nothing crazy. Cool, and then she jumps into the water. Because this is like what could have been, you know? This is like all part of the... Whatever. Crazy shot. Ooh, no wonder everybody says I look like Satela. I kind of do. That's her thought right there. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Ooh, what? I'm just like sitting here overwhelmed and then Rem's like, Rem, static Rem just comes in and says a bar. I believe praying to ask for a favor is arrogant. Prayer should be seek for seeking forgiveness. Dang, Rem, that's a good line. What the heck? I'm literally, I'm literally just Amelia just sitting here as I'm assailed by like a million different people yapping. And then absolute bar is dropped. Garfield v. Elsa. That's what, the, that's what we just found. All right, Garfield v. v Elsa. Um, remember, Echidona stuff. I think this fight basically is just a super good fight. I don't think there's any like really crazy things that happen. <laughs> Damn! Oh my God. Holy shit. Wait, she stabs him in the arm and he just goes tiger arm and then like rips her in half. Look at, look at her ear. She's literally dead. Wait, I don't remember that being that crazy. Holy shit. I know he like does something like she's still alive, right? Because she's not dead by that. But he literally just is like, oh, you stabbed me? Cool. And then bashes half her head off. That's crazy. Or is it the pig that he does something to? What is go Garfield's a monster, bro. I wonder how the power ranking goes. I mean, obviously below Reinhard by like a million years, but like how strong is he like, you know? He's he seems pretty kind of cracked. Oh, he does this thing to the rock hippo. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, I didn't... No, I remember this. I remember this very clearly. Man, but did he really one-shot Elsa? What happened with Elsa? Is that it? Get destroyed. Get destroyed. Get destroyed, child. Get destroyed, child. No, Elsa's fine. Oh, she has some, like, regen. Okay, she has regen or something. How do you kill Elsa, then? Oh, my goodness. What happened with the Elsa death? I just regen. Yeah. Dang, that's crazy. She regened off of that entire chunk being ripped off. That's crazy. Yeah, I forgot about this. That was crazy. I forgot they just bite each other. It's so raw. It's so raw. Oh my goodness, and Puck's still here. Okay, okay, so what did we learn? We learned that Garfield is the goat. I forgot how much of a goat he is, and Elsa got crushed by a giant rock. Heard. Okay. And by rock, I mean a rock hippo. What happens with Puck? Puck's literally right here just shooting things. Fighting Roswell. Doing his thing. Okay. Puck is trapped in his stone because he over he pushed himself too hard. And that's why we need a new magic stone to give him a catalyst to wake him back up. He's in a coma. Okay. Puck's in a coma. Rem's in a coma. Uh, Elsa is dead. Garfield's a goat. Perfect. That's that's good to know. I because I kind of forgot that Puck was hoed. Um, to be fair, it was literally the last episode of season two. So that's a very new development. Um, overdid it. Okay. 
I'm feeling pretty good right now. Um, it's crazy. Else, uh, Julius and Subaru, like, last engagement I had written down, because I wanted to see, like, exactly where their um, position we, with each other were, it kind of, they didn't really do anything in season two. I mean, maybe a tiny bit. Like, no, nah, I mean, I don't even think they did anything here in the, uh, the knighting ceremony. So that makes sense that they still have kind of a crappy relationship. Okay, 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 okay. So, okay. Okay, final tally about the rewatch shopping list. Puck in the crystal, Puck's in the crystal because he, he pushed himself too hard in the fight with Roswell. Perfect. So we need a new crystal to wake him back up. Check. Wilhelm wife, family drama, death. Um, I already gave my theory for that. I think Reinhard was probably, we don't know. The thing is, we don't know, we have to theorize, okay? But we're good, so we're good there. Serious potential connection to Beetle Goose slash the Witch Cult. I still think it's Fortuna. If it's not Fortuna, it has to be somebody else related to Amelia. Um, I'm not 100% on the Fortuna connection because their eyes are different. And then also, why would her entire body be covered in bandages slash burns? The only reasoning I can get is that it was the um, the snake mobbies, the disease mobbies that Archie got his foot like munched off from or like infected and then he cut it off. So that could be why Sirius is all burnt up that like her because fortuna got like the impaled and then serious maybe the corpse but it would it would be like an animated corpse situation so who really knows i i'm thinking the only reason i think it's fortuna is because it would hurt amelia's sanity and the show loves hurting the sanity of the characters ragul is jumping everybody that makes sense it was just crucia and rem there crucia's memories got eaten they left crucia alive they only made, ate her memories not everyone's memory of her ate all of Rem, everyone's memories of Rem, right? So, scary, heard, heard. Um, there is, it is notable that Amelia, in her backstory when she was a child, saw Regulus's face. She didn't recognize him, season three, episode one. That is a shame. Uh, she's the only person that could recognize him. Um, so, yeah, sucks to suck, I guess. I mean, to be fair, he was just a guy that walked past her, so she, she probably just, it probably just slipped by her, you know what I mean? But that's the best I got for that. Pandora, what is her deal? I still don't know. Um, Julius and Subaru, last engagement. They did like nothing together in season two. No wonder Subaru still doesn't like Julius. Elsa fight with Garfield. Lit, crazy, rewatched that. Really enjoyable. Um, yeah, I forgot how good that was. Amelia family backstory, I feel pretty good on. Everything we know about previous isekai people. Because um, remember, we are a cut content. We, we look at cut content sometimes a little bit. Whenever it's safe. Um, Flugel. I need to write down all their names, but like I, I roughly have an idea. I think there's three in my head, right? There's um, all the the guy that did the arch that like um, made the architecture of the Lake City like a big deal that they talked about in this episode, um, whatever his name was, and then Flugel from Flugel's Tree. So that's I think it's just those three. Um, I'm very curious about Flugel right now, but I don't have anything to work with there, so we're just gonna keep going. Perfect. Now, boom! Unless I already have it up, comments. Comments for last episode. I haven't even read them yet, so now I'm gonna take like 20 minutes to read all these and then I'll cut back when I'm there. All right. Ooh, good question. Ooh, I, okay, this is interesting. Do we think Liliana's sus? So commenter here um, says, Liliana, honestly, she's insanely sus to me with that whole timing to send Super to get snacks at the end there. And then of course the scenes at the end of the Archbishop basically were like super good. Yeah, really great start to the season, but the idea of like Liliana sending Super to get snacks? Oh, Liliana as a as an evil agent? Is that ever a move? I mean, I I don't think Liliana's sus, but that's an interesting point, so we can keep that in mind. Like, that doesn't really suss me out too much, but it is pretty crazy that she was like, hey, go there, and that the serious... Because, like, think about it. Serious doing the whole applause situation was timed with a certain ringing of the clock, right? It was like a ringing of a bell, which means that other people... Other people connected to Sirius would know that she's about to go do her thing. So if Liliana was connected to Sirius, she could send Subaru to that location knowing that Sirius was about to step on stage because of the timing of the bell and make things happen. I don't think that's what's happening, but it is on the table. Okay, okay. Julius, first of all, I think him and Subaru should bang, but, outside, but besides that, Julius is such an intriguing character. What? No, no, no. Who is shipping Subaru and Julius? What, what is going on here? No. No, 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 no. Subaru, Amelia, done. We don't have to play games anymore, okay? My goodness. My goodness. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Good comment. Good comment. Breakdown about Subaru and Amelia's growth. Um, yeah, they definitely are freaking locked in right now. Absolutely. Especially like Amelia with getting called a half devil. Not even mm, glances right off of her, you know? Um, we also kind of saw, we saw that with a lot of characters. A lot of characters have like locked in on their social game, which is really important because obviously we're like, it's a very, there's a lot of social intrigue happening in the story. So it's important for everyone to be locked in in that regard. Um, but yeah, I think Subaru has been doing a great job personally. I don't think he was doing anything cringe. I mean, even him blowing up on Heimkill a bit was straight up pray like you're saying praised by julius you know for being somewhat righteous i think somebody else said uh, i'll get to it i'll get to that in a moment i'll get to that in a moment yeah. <laughs> <gasps> okay let's get back into it so I've read all the comments. We're lit. I've also read, so one of the comments I was talking about several big translation issues in this episode. Lucky for you, I already got that figured out with a crunchy row uh, or um, a, a post on Twitter about those translation issues and, and listing them. So I've already read through all of these. The most important one I think is Subaru's outburst because in the episode he said, so it doesn't matter how many times I have to suffer then. Even when that happened, I was kind of like, I was a little like bruh off of that, but I, I don't know if I, I don't think I really went into that or commented on that at all. But it, it, that was kind of a weird thing. Um, but what the line actually is closer to is something like, so then it's okay for you to trample all over people's hearts like that, right? And this was him um, having an outburst, I think on Heinkel, yeah? So that's obviously a very big difference because it's the, it's the difference between like him being like, oh, you don't care about my suffering versus, oh, you don't care about anyone's pain. You, you, you're fine with hurting anyone, right? So it's different from him being like self, self-centered self versus like not self-centered, right? So big translation difference, <laughs> good on that. Um, this is a helpful clarification that saying that if, um, if freaking um, Heinz Ketchup, Heinkel, if Heinkel were to rebel against the kingdom, it would mark the entire family as treasonous, including Reinhardt and Wilhelm. Um, and that's obviously a really big deal because Heinkel kind of sucks and Reinhardt and Wilhelm are kind of on our side. So it's kind of a problem if Reinhardt and Wilhelm get marked as treasonous, that would be very bad. So, uh, and that wasn't really clear to me. I wasn't sure what they were saying in the episodes so that, that helped, that's very helpful. Um, this is, this makes sense to me about Heinkel, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Julia saying truly, it makes my ears hurt. That actually made sense to me. Like the translation's a little weird, sure. But it absolutely made sense to me when he said like, it makes my ears hurt. He's not going like, ow, my little ears. Yeah, it's saying like, hearing this is hard for me to hear. So it makes my ears hurt. Like that, that made sense to me, but um, I, I, some people didn't like that translation. So, and I think that's fair. I mean, it's, it's a little, it's not a phrase that like I would typically hear. Like I haven't heard a phrase like that in English. It just, I don't know, it works for me personally. Um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, and he, oh, oh, I didn't get this at all. That's actually crazy about how be it. I thought, I thought, yeah, Subaru, when Subaru says, did you know about my seasickness and used it to separate me from Amelia? I thought he was talking to Beatrice but no, he's accusing Anastasia. Ah, oh, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, the line is subject list, so I get why the subtitler had, had to hazard a guess. Okay, no, because I thought he was aiming that at Beatrice, and I was like, did Beatrice make them get on the boat? I was kind of confused about that, so that makes sense. Um, and then the um, talk with Rachins making a bit more sense also makes sense, too. Um, that was a good sentence I just said, huh? But, but basically, he said, we danced with death together instead of we talked about life together. Um, I kind of, it's, I don't know, a little bit same difference to me. I mean, Dance With Death is a better statement because, like, it's ironic because Subaru literally danced with death with Rachins because he died. So Dance With Death is just a better line. Um, but they both, I kind of understand, like, the meaning of both. So, good. We're good there. Um, Comments-wise, I did read through all of them. <laughs> um, I will do a Felix cosplay if ReZero becomes the biggest series on my channel. I'll just say that verbally. I'm not scared. Um, but yeah, lots of good stuff. Not not really too much. I'm gonna jump into. Mostly people are just hyped about the new the new thing or like saying like, oh my goodness, I forgot Pink Cubed was an actual person that makes videos because you know I've barely seen this channel since the last ReZero videos. 
The alg algorithm hates him. It's only slightly my fault. That's funny. Uh, yeah, shout out all the other shows I watch. Okay, I watch more than Bree Zero. Literally, you do this. Boom, boom, boom. Pink Cubed. P uh, podcasts or playlists. I turned some of my playlists into podcasts because I thought it was funny. Look at all these. Look at all these fun shows, man. Anyways. Wait, did I just... Sometimes... Oh, shoot. I just leaked. Eh, well, how bad was the leak? Do I even care? No, because it can see... You can see all the playlist that I have is private. I literally have a, a playlist called Weird Videos and has 21 videos and it's private. <laughs> That's really funny. Okay. A little bit of an expose right there. But yeah. Um, honestly, I have been... I think I'm probably going to edit out the vast majority of the yapping I've been doing because it's mostly just been me a little confused. But like, I'll always just say stuff and then I'll be like, oh wait, that's dumb. And then I'll figure out what actually is happening and then I'm done with the sentence. And I've done that for the last 58 minutes and 50 seconds. Um, I'm kind of ready to just jump into the new episode because I know there's going to be an OP. I think there's going to be an ED. So we still have a lot of stuff to look forward to right now, a lot of stuff to analyze. Um... I f and I'm pr I feel pretty settled on pretty much everything I was confused about coming out of season or season three episode one, right? So I think we're ready for it. Let's just go ahead and jump into it. Um, this episode is also an hour and a half, right? Every episode in season three is an hour and a half. It better be twenty three minutes. My day is ruined. Okay, let's jump into this though. Um, I think Subaru has just respawned after the serious death. Uh, I'm very. Curious how his mental state will be. It's been a while since he've had since he bleh, since he has had to return by death. So I mean that'll be traumatic a little bit, but he's used to that. Um, I think the big difference is how Sirius's abilities seem to like convince him to enjoy bloodlust. You know, it riled, you know, got him in a very specific way. I'm very curious how Sirius's power actually works. A couple of people in the comments talked about like the clap, which is something I only noticed when I was editing. How she like claps and then kind of starts pointing at people and doing stuff. So she's definitely got some sort of like, I think there's a physical motion involved because she was making a lot of gestures, um, but we don't know how the ability works. We really don't. We can only kind of guess and speculate. So episode two of season three, episode 52, if you count them all up, let's just get this going in a three, a two, a one. Bang. And he's so quick on that recovery. Ooh. He doesn't even know if he did. Okay, so maybe his memory's a bit, a bit fuzzy. Because of all that nonsense. Yeah. You don't want to put Beatrice in harm's way? What is it, his plan? I mean, he doesn't have a plan. He hasn't had the time to make a plan. He's just like, everybody stay out of harm's way. I'm going to go take care of this. You know? That's not exactly a good, like, we don't know how this ability works. But also, but also, he does have Return by Death. It's a little bit of a grind set moment. This is a little grind set to me, but we'll see, we'll see. Liliana, what's your name? Is that your name? Be quiet. It is her name. OP, OP, OP. Oh, it looks like a bullseye, because we're all caught as the targets. Okay, lock in. That squad goals right there. Is that Felix? I recognize those legs. Okay. All the different groups, all the different squads pulling up. Zam. That's clean. I like that. All the different like uh, royal contestants. Otto and Garfield, my goats. Otto, Otto looks confused. What's up, Satela? Is that the crystal? Hmm. Is Liliana singing that? Is that what I'm supposed to get out of this? Ooh, ooh. A blood fountain. Siri, dude, Sirius is chilling there. Wait, I liked that. Oh, we gotta look at all of them. They just they just revealed a bunch of uh, Archbishop's look. 
We look up a bunch of them. Oh, Krush making moves. Yo, who's that? Who's that? Okay. Reinhardt making moves. I'm so excited to watch Reinhardt fight, bro. That's about to be so hype. Okay, Amelia's got a giant ice sword. Yeah, as you do. That's casual. Oh, he's got her! Oh, shit. Okay, I like that one. That was good. There's so much to dig into there. There is so much. Super walks in with his little beady eyes. There is so much to dig into there. So many, like, individual, like, frames that had, like, a bunch of people. Is the child being forced to tie himself up? What's going on? What is, what is happening? <laughs> That's scary. So her mind control can get very specific. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, no, that, no, it's not mind control. It's just, that makes sense. We already heard about that. That makes sense. Where is Tina? Is Tina in the building, bro? Is Tina in the building? Subaru's panicking, bro. What? Okay, no, he's already getting infected. Both of their eyes are red. Dude, this is crazy. Ooh, good grab. He stopped himself from getting choked. Just kidding. Ah! All oh, his fingers! It's already over. This life is already over. Ah! Oh, that's so horrible! God! This is so dark. I'm already lost, bro. <laughs> She's, is this like an empathy? She's doing like an empathy. Or is she connecting him and Subaru? The whole world is mirror. Yeah, I think, I think she's like connecting their fear with each other and making them both more scared or something, right? So they're both feeling each other's like agony, bro. I'm scared to live. Subaru, we're not going there alone ever again, Subaru. Gone, Subaru. Never go. Grab him, grab him, grab him. Good headbutt, good headbutt, good headbutt, good headbutt Subaru. Are you okay, dude? That was the, that was so horrible. That was the most, was, is that the worst death I've ever seen him have? I mean, the rabbits was bad, but that was so bad. That was so hor- I'm like- I almost feel like I need to pause, just to like, process. Oh my goodness, he has no time, you're right, that sucks so bad for him. This guy is so- his will is so strong. His will is so strong. Reinhard, that's facts. That's facts. I don't know if he's immune to bar bishops, but that's really good. Oh, because he's connected to Fell. Rotten's connected to Fell, so he would be able to go get Reinhard. Dude. Subaru's mental is the... He is such a Giga Chad, bro. To be able to... Go what is going on? What is going on? Yeah, okay, good. His notoriety is giving him some street cred. Rachin's got a spell? He's got a flare? Um, come help me, please. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, Super's already got bags under his eyes. Sirius is here. Sirius is here. All right, Super, get out of dodge. You can't get hit by this right now, bro. You gotta get out. Get out, get out, get out. Plug your ears and run. 
Oh, it's already got him. It's already got everybody. Reinhardt's pulling up, though. Reinhardt will pull up. Oh, did it make it worse? The claps, the claps. Oh, he's already infected. Come on. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. Dude, this shit is so peak. It's so scary, bro. Look, he's already gone and gone. Okay, but Reinhardt's on the way. Hopefully. The hood. Super's already gone, bro. Nice! Nice! Dude, of course he can run on water. Alright, just go ba ding! Cut, cut her in half right now. You're good. You're good, brother. You're good. Just go up there and stop it. Just go stop it. Enough yapping. Get, get, make it happen. Get in there. It was both of us. I mean, it was Subaru, but he just like pure, he just purified them or snapped them out of it. I mean, it, it could be, a, it could just be that like attention, like the attention is broken. Maybe it's not a specific ability, but like, okay. Nice, nice, nice. All right, let's see if Reinhardt can get infected. I assume not, but I, I just don't, you know, I don't know. Oh, so humble. Unless he has a blessing. Unless he has a blessing that protects him. But hopefully. Hopefully. Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> okay, she got some fighting. She got some fighting ability. Nice. Even Reinhard without sword is enough to beat her, though, it looks like. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, scary, 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 scary. Not nice, not nice. Oh, they're they're all they're all brainwashed into killing her right now. Ooh, that's a good line. That's a good line. Everyone's like conjoined together, you know? So it's like that's love. Her power is so interesting, bro. Oh no, but if, maybe if she dies, everyone's gonna die her death. Because if everyone's connected right now, she could be connecting herself with everybody in the same way she connected the kid to everybody earlier in the last loop, or the loop before that. So maybe killing her is too dangerous right now. Oh, but Subaru's getting infected. Ah! It's gonna kill everybody. Ah, oh, it's too late. Ah, oh, everyone's dead. Oh. Including Subaru, yeah? Return by death now? That's so scary! <laughs> Okay, so, dude, she can connect herself with people? That's so hard to deal with, but, but Reinhardt's immune, so we can still deal with that. We just have to, we just have to have him take her outside the city, and then do it. It was a good move, it was a good move, we just gotta communicate more. She has, like, the power of ultimate empathy, bro. Where she can connect people emotionally and physically that's so scary and yeah i could see how that's love because love is like like you know conjoinment makes a lot of sense with love i mean like you could do a reading of like sex as that kind of thing you know what i mean okay let me shut up oh no reinhardt is still the move reinhardt could work we just have to take him her out of the city Right, just beat her up and then grab her and then jump into the stratosphere and then kill her.
Ba-dum. Ba-dum. Betty, real for that? Betty, real for that? She say, I trust you. Yeah. Oh, his eye, he blinked when, he blinked when the kid's eye got licked. That's crazy. I like this though, this is a fair move. Yeah, this is a fair move asking for her, her take. <laughs> He's built different. He is the definition of built different. He makes all mana around him obey him. Yo, right heart is cracked. <laughs> we kind of knew that from season one, yeah? I didn't realize it was all, though. But yeah, we kind of knew that, I think. I kind of forgot, though. Oh, blind everyone. Smart. Yeah, we have to kill her within Shamok. That's actually a good idea. That, I like that idea. I won't let anyone badmouth Shamok. It's his one move, bro. It's his one move. Let Shamok cook. I mean, she's still gonna be a good fighter, yeah. Uh, Amelie? Um, um, Amelie? Uh, all right, bet. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Bad girl, I suppose. Ooh, Priscilla. Thank you, Priscilla. Nice. Ooh, Amelia's grown, bro. Yo. I like this. Good music, good OST, bro. I protect you. Oh. She'll be useful, bro. We just gotta tell her the situation. Like, we're not gonna be able to beat her in a 2v1. I'm gonna be honest. Subaru plus Betty, I don't know if we can beat her, bro. If we also have to play her on Shamak, I mean, that's, that's just tough. Amelia's got a new power spike. She'll be good. You gotta tell her the situation, though. Tell her, tell her what we're fighting. Did that just work? <laughs> Yo! I mean, if that worked, that's pretty much the best thing you could have done. Because she didn't have the time to do her ability. She just says, alright, death. <laughs> Did it work? Oh no, she's still alive. Good, Amelia's on it, bro. No, where is she? Where is she? Where is, where is she? Oh, Shamok's useless. All right, we lost. If Shamok's useless, it's over. Amelia, he wants. she wants some Amelia, bro. Oh my goodness, it's over.
Uh oh, we're about to get a crazy revelation, bro. Damn! Okay, I kind of like this serious. Serious getting serious? I'm going to burn you alive and scatter your ashes over my husband's grave? Okay, so she's got a second ability, it looks like. That's uh, not good. I would say this is bad, actually. Giga Chad response. The Giga Chad response. Oh my goodness. Uh, I mean, everyone's infected. It's already kind of over. Well, I don't know if she's, if Sirius is using it on herself too right now. Ooh. Nice. Little dual wield. Ooh, is that a halberd? Okay, okay. What are we? Tr but I don't. I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what you know what I mean. Oh, oh. The whip! He's actually doing some whip ability, bro. Ooh, the spear saps, okay. They haven't recognized each other, or rather, well, Sirius has recognized Amelia, obviously, but Amelia hasn't recognized anything yet. Homewrecker. Gave it to me, gave what to you? Whoa, who is that? Is that Tina? Oh, she got Tina. She got like, oh. Uh... Okay, she had two different colors there, so she has like, ah! Oh yeah, that is crazy. She claimed to be angry to the person that is literally wrath. That's not a good look. She like challenged her domain. Who? Who? Regulus? Who is that? Regulus has grabbed her? Why is Regulus not on her, the wrath? <laughs> It's just like the OP when he grabbed her in the OP. I guess. All right, now Super knows who Regulus is. Good. Bro, they're about to end the episode. Don't do it. Don't. Oh, don't. It's 79. 79, Regulus. 79? Dude, this show is crazy. It's episode two. It's full of blood. No, we don't have time to rest. Not yet. We got all the fun slice of life done episode one and now it's just full send pain suffering now. We've already died like three times, bro. 
Ooh, bleeding flowers. Serious dancing? All right, serious. Break it down. Oh, I need to know about Sirius, bro. So Sirius hates Amelia. Regulus wants to marry Amelia. Ooh, golden lighting, golden lighting. I like it. I still don't know who that is, but I'm intrigued. Gotta be another Archbishop. Or that, the person on the water. Dang! Super really is, like, locking into that whip right now. That's his return by death blood from uh, OP1, yeah? That's like the same way they look there. Ooh, everybody he loves, bro. I recognize those arms. Yo! Okay, that goes hard. That goes hard. That goes hard. Okay, I literally couldn't breathe that entire episode, bro. This is the most horrible thing, like, sequence of events I've ever seen, bro. It's, so it's, it's crazy. She, she connected Subaru and whatever the kids, Luz Bell, and then Subaru started panicking the same way. That's why they both throw up. Bro, the shot where she's behind him is crazy. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen, bro. And then the, this, this whole sequence of throwing him over... Because I thought he was good for a second. I thought he, I thought he saved himself. That this was so dark. This was like, this was like gore, bro. I like, like him getting eaten by rabbits was really bad. I'm trying to think of like what other deaths he's had. He's had that have been like really bad. You know, he's had a good handful. Like he's gotten gutted. He's gotten a lot of things. But this hit me in a different way. Like, look at how he stops it, you know? So he's, like, holding himself from getting choked out. I thought she was just going to choke him there. And it's, it's spiked, so it's already digging into his hands. Right here. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, that's so bad. It's like, it's like holding, like, a Garrote wire. And then the wire tightens, and it just slices through. So horrible. It's so horrible. I, this gotta be the worst one that's ever happened. This has to be the worst one. I, 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 I'm like... I'm just, dude. He's literally like vomit, blood, no fingers, choked out while being connected to the child who has never been more scared in his entire life. Like he's, he's getting attacked physically and emotionally and being like killed physically and emotionally. I love this. Bro, okay. But what I love, I absolutely love how Sirius has contextualized wrath. And like, like she's done it in like a love way where it's like, I keep saying empathy. Empathy is a big part of interpersonal connection. I feel what you feel type shit, you know? So for her to be weaponizing that is so good. You know, I just... It's so horrible. I Because it is connection. Oh my goodness. And now he's getting choked out too, bro. Okay, okay, I can't do this anymore. Get me to the OP, get me to the OP. Get me to anything else because I can't take this shit, bro. Okay, okay, OP analysis, OP analysis. Visuals only, we'll have to do a separate thing for the lyrics in a minute. What was all that? Chat, what am I looking at right now? Why are they speaking in, like, hieroglyphs? Okay, okay, can we use this? Okay, somebody has to make... Because, look, this probably means re-zero, right? So now, unless this is just the Japanese... This isn't Japanese, bro. We have to translate this to start making a way to code break later. Because these glyphs are going to appear on screen later in the show, Okay. And the only way we're going to be able to translate is it translate it is by using ReZero. But I don't speak Japanese, so I'm freaking lost. Okay. Ooh, you're telling me Otto gets to be a part of this? You're telling me Otto is on the sidelines right there? I love my Otto. Oh, wait, there was a translation. Okay, somebody told me that there was a translation issue in this episode. Um, and only to open it after... I make the video, or after I watch the episode. So let me um, pull that up real quick, just so I can get while I'm remembering. Oh my goodness, I have a million 
uh, ads right now. Um, blah, blah, okay. Open this after watching the episode. It's a bit of a mistranslation, which could be important for the discussion. Oh my goodness, it's a Twitter link. <laughs> As a final side note, while not wrong, the subs here obfuscate the reference to Fortuna. Okay, so we're right. So we're right, yeah? We're right about the Fortuna call? We got that one? Um, they are the same as the most amazing woman Fortuna in the world. The point is that Sirius is acting as an anti-Fortuna by insulting precisely the traits Amelia inherited from her. Are all things a person I love praise? That makes me the same as the most amazing woman in the world. Wait, what? As a final side note, while not wrong, the subs here obfuscate the reference to Fortuna. Oh, so she's not, she's... Okay, I'm not going to read the rest of that. I'm just going to read this one bit. They're the same as the most amazing woman in the world. Okay, so the character traits that Amelia is saying are lit because Subaru praised them are, in, are very specific references to Fortuna. So why? What is going on? Okay, I don't know what to make of that. I, I, I like that we're making that Sirius made, an, or, made a Fortuna connection. But that doesn't necessarily mean Sirius is Fortuna. So I, I don't know what to make of that. I don't know what to make of that. That's really interesting. Okay. Hmm. An anti-Fortuna. Interesting take. Okay. Um. Felix. Now is not the time for the double peace sign. I love you. I love you. Now is not the time. Shit, we're in war right now. Okay. This goes pretty hard. All right. I, I don't like, like, you know what I mean? Like. I got, I got my problems with the Anastasia camp, but like this, this shall go hard. This shall go hard. Give it to them while they, well, you know, they deserve that. They deserve that. Julius is my goat. Okay. Reinhard felt, wait, who's everybody in the, in this camp? Is it also, um, felt, uh, old man Rom? Is this old man Rom? I don't know who this guy is. This is, um, Con Candy. This is, I think, these are just the three buffoons. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. And then that's Heinkel, and I don't know who's wearing that like dress up there. All oh, okay, interesting. So they're they're hiding one of the members of the Priscilla camp, maybe. From view there. Okay, Amelia Chillin, Amelia Chillin. Are these children important? Okay, I don't think so. Garfield Auto. Um now we're going to the witch's side. What is this crystal? It's green. I, I originally thought this was the puck crystal, but I'm not really sure what to make of it. It cracks, which makes me again think that like it's uh, something to do with a spirit. I don't know. I like how Liliana is the one speaking there, so, uh, like speaking to the lyrics. That kind of cooks. Okay. I like Rams at Rem's bedside, it looks like. That's interesting. Uh, Garfield's mom and, and some Garfield Garfield uh, half-siblings, I assume. It's it bro, it's crazy that it's an old it looks it's an older sister and a younger boy again. Because Frederica was an older sister and Garfield was the younger boy, and then she just re she repeated it, bro. These are just the um the uh, Anastasia group, I think. I actually don't know who these are. Okay. Um, that's uh, Liz Bell and Tina. Oh my gosh. And then, you know, everything starts going horribly wrong, as you would expect. The fountain of blood goes hard. Uh, is this Elsa? I'm seeing massive honkers. I'm, so I'm thinking Elsa. Does she have that clip? Hmm. There's also like a, a line of hair on the right side here, which is really interesting. That's like extra bright. Oh no, that's just getting highlights. It's just highlights. Okay. Because Elsa could be relevant. Because, I mean, Elsa's relevant in Garfield right now. I don't know what that is. An apple, picking an apple, what, Garden of Eden type shit. <laughs> Bunch of crystals. Those are the crystals we were going to use for Puck, I think. A Wilhelm's wife. Not sure what this is. This go hard. Serious swing on her chains is a. I love that. Whoa, whoa. This guy's shadow. What's his name? Like, uh, Lie? Lie's, uh, reflection. I mean, 
being like a priest guy chilling there. Okay, interesting, interesting. Maybe who Lai used to be or who Lai masquerades as. Scary. Okay, and then this is like our beast master, that lady. Regulus and I assume all of his wives, because he, he said he has had 78 wives before, so this could be all his wives. He really is, like like one of the commenters said, he really is Gilgamesh, bro. That, that shit's so funny, actually. Shout out Fate Zero. Fate Zero's a, I, I quite enjoyed Fate Zero. Shout out the reaction series to Fate Zero. A little self-plug, all right? Like, share, subscribe. All right, shut up. These are just everybody on our side. Okay. Who do we not recognize here? Why are there two lies? Are there two of them? There, is the reflection literal? The reflection might be more literal because there's two of them in this shot. So the reflection is literal. Terrifying. Okay. Um, who's that girl on the end? Okay. Who are we? Have gluttony is lie. Regulus is greed. Beetle goose is sloth. Sirius is wrath. So we're missing lust, envy. Well, sin. Archbishop of envy. Why do I feel like we actually had that? Hmm. Okay. Lust, envy, pride. And then, like, Vainglory, Melancholy, if we want to include Pandora and Hector, who, like, I barely have... I, I, they are weird, so I don't know, bro. Um, but, yeah, I'm thinking... I would guess Lust for her. My, my reason for guessing, guessing Lust is that she is, like... She looks like an animal master. And so, like... I don't know. Lust? F it, we ball. That's a bit sauce. <laughs> That's a bit, a bit of a strange statement there. I mean... She also is uh, kind of attractive, you know what I mean? All right. Bro, Garfield is fighting an entire dragon. Garfield's fighting a dragon? This is definitely what what the uh, that other, the girl that I was just talking about who might be the lust uh, archbishop would, is definitely who brought the, the dragon to the city. You know what I mean? He uppercuts a dragon? Garfield might go. Okay, Wilhelm fighting a witch cultist. Freaking, um, what's this guy's name? I've made fun of him a lot. Is he about to be a goat? Is he about to be my goat? He might be. We'll see. Wow, there's definitely two lies. Yeah, we're seeing both of them. The one the one that's got the, the deep V cut is the one that attacked with Regulus. So this other one, I guess I, got, I should write that down. Two of them. Uh, it could be like a sister because it looks like braided hair. So maybe they're like twins, like male, female twins. Uh, Julius and Krush are fighting them. And then Priscilla is just, you know, doing a little bit of a sun, sun princess or sun queen, whatever she called herself. Dang, this girl kind of fine, though. Am I wrong for that? She kind of fine. Yeah, look at her. She's doing Beastmaster stuff with Reinhard. Okay. The usual. Reinhard! I love Reinhard, bro. And then we saw this fight. The Amelia, um... Serious fight, we just were kind of seeing now. Her with her ice great sword. Ooh, this, that, that's cool, because this this is reminiscent of the flare that um that um con candy shot, whatever his name, and then but it also is like them doing some sort of move, Betty and Subaru. Yeah, so this looks like what's gonna happen next episode, because Regulus has Amelia. Um and is like, I'm gonna wife this person. And they're obviously not going to let that happen. But Regulus' entire thing is like having a barrier and saying like, um, it's actually within my rights as an individual to wed people, you know? Okay, whoa. Yeah, don't you go do, doing this to me. All right, boom, bang, bop, zoom in. Uh, Regulus eyes, Betty eyes. I don't know what that is. This is the flare that was shot up that Subaru and uh, Betty were part of. Okay, so they're just playing, they're playing the, um, the OP in reverse right now. In the um, so this is return by death, right? Where it's going back. So he dies, and it, we're, now we're doing a return by death here. Yeah, this is just everything we already saw. I'm just making sure they didn't like sneak anything in. Well, Liliana got full four, four full frames. Otto got two. Put some respect on uh, Otto. Now I guess Otto's right here, okay. Return by death, he's back. End of the end of the OP. Okay, okay, interesting. Um, do we wanna do OP lyrics? Let's do OP lyrics. All right, opening full reweave lyrics. Let's check it. Mm. 
Mm, mm, mm. I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to pause to read these. Do we want to do one clean read, and then we go back and do the lyric? Let's do a clean. All right. Starting at 024. No pausing through to a bang. Because it's the full song, so we want to listen to the full song. World that should be free. Okay. It's tangled and cloudy. Emotions drawn together. Wrath reference. Wrath reference. Serious reference. Twisted Gate, I like that. Subaru's gonna keep it from unraveling because he's my goat. Ooh, I like that part, okay. Weaving a future. It, it, it does feel like we're having to weave together like 30 plot threads right now, so that's pretty fitting. The Fragments of Causality? Strumming, strumming the thread is like what Liliana does with music, hmm? Right, making music out of the, the, the weaving, yeah, some shit, I don't know. Okay, okay. I'm liking the music, like, itself. It's really just talking about weaving fate into what you want it to be, type, type shit. And how that's what it is to be alive, you know? Yeah. We were being chosen? Ooh! By whom? It does feel like fate's not in our hands, that fate's toying with us. It does feel that way, with like Satayla and shit. Mmm. The era? Okay. The scale increase? Now we're talking era? Eleven dimensions? <laughs> Yo! Guitar solo? Guitar solo? Okay, okay. That's pretty funny, that's pretty funny. This is Liliana right now. Fate and destiny over, like, intersecting. Fate and destiny. Hmm. Mm, I like how they're repeating it with, like, a more of a lyrical focus. Ooh. Okay, I like the music, bro. This is kind of hitting. The thin prayer I keep leaving in is none other than resolve. Ooh. This is like, this is some, this is some shit like, um, the unbreakable human spirit. That's like what this feels like, bro. Right? But like fate is like messing with you, but you say F it, no, I'm gonna weave my own type thing. And that's what resolve is. And so I like, they're turning into like a song thing too. Zing! Okay, I like that, I like that, I like that. Okay, so A, the music's really good, that's going on the Spotify. Just gotta be honest with you. Her doing the like, Da, 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 da. You know what I mean? That should just go hard. That should just always go hard. I like the drops, okay? Just as words bind people together, just as the present is tied to memories. Okay, words binding people to anything about binding together is super relevant because of Sirius. Because Sirius's authority, ability, whatever, is about binding people together, right? So that's already kind of a crazy thing. So it's like someone's trying to bind us together. That's that's really the feeling I got from a lot of this, right? Like, um, we will stand and face it, like, wheel, tracing the spiral along thousands of deadly lines, even if fate seems to break, it shapes where I am, the will to be one. Like, I feel like, I felt like it was saying, like, I'm going to shape this. I'm going to, with my resolve, resolve right there, form together, um, 
my destiny or some shit, right? And and that's very important whenever they're saying like words bind people together because Sirius is trying to bind other people together, right? She's she's the one that's getting in Subaru's head and connecting him with people. So if Subaru or like Amelia, I feel like uh, I'm get I, I felt like it was Amelia speaking a little bit personally, just mostly because it was a woman singing, so it just kind of does that. But if it's like Subaru, it's like oh you're trying to bind me together, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do my own thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna weave my own fate type shit. Um, just as the present is tied to memories, memories is a big deal, obviously, because um, Amelia's memories include Beetle Goose, Regulus, and um, Fortuna. And Fortuna was referenced by Sirius. That's what the translation helped us out with, and or the, the little translation fix. And so the present being tied to memories is extraordinarily relevant because Amelia's memories are literally influencing the present right now. And then of course, like, you know, memories in general is obviously really important, but it's extra um, important coming off of season two where we kept going into memories with Amelia and, and, and Subaru. Um, but his, his are a little less relevant because they were back in the back in the, the normal modern world, right? Not in the Isekai world, right? A world that should be free. That's pretty self-explanatory. I don't want to be imprisoned, right? Free to do my own thing, top G. The truth is tangled and clouded, emotions drawn together distorting. The truth is tangled and clouded. Okay. Without anyone knowing the reason, struggling and flailing. Yeah, this is really unbreakable human spirit type type thing, right? Where it's like, I don't know why I struggle against against reality or truth. The truth is tangled and clouded. Without anyone knowing the reason, struggling and failing, with a twisted gate cling to a thread of hope. So yeah, it's like. I just, I just, in my brain, twisted gate, struggling and flailing. I mean, this is like Subaru, mentally destroyed, covered in blood, struggling, crawling forward, clinging to a thread of hope that shit can be okay and that we can make this shit work, you know? So he's trying to keep this together, right? I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty normal. Monogatari! That's pretty normal for, uh, I mean, super, I mean, super as a character, that's pretty much like what he does, you know? Everything goes horribly wrong, is at the verge of unraveling, and then he, with a twisted gait, struggling and flailing, crawls forward and then straightens that that strand of fate, you know, back out. Ooh, I really like that part of the song. That that go hard, bro. Tracing the spiral along thousands of deadly lines, even if fate seems to break. The spiral? Okay. Twisting it together, weaving a future, that's what we call living. So, okay, twisting together the... Okay, so it's like, fate's unraveling, the story is unraveling, fate is breaking apart, everything's scattering, but to take that and to weave it back into a through, like, into one line, that's what it is to be alive. That's like, that's basically the thing. It's like fate will divide you, will scatter you to the wind and refusing and like holding on. And I mean, it's so interesting that it's like a weaving metaphor, right? I mean, that works really well with like, like fate has always been tied to like strings, you know, like the three, th the, what are they called? The three people that like, the three women that like weave fate or whatever. Um, the red string of fate myth in like Japanese stuff. Um... I think at least, right? Fate and like string has always been a thing. So for the string to be unraveling and for the person to respond to that, to that by weaving it back together, that makes a lot of sense. And to call that living, I think also makes a lot of sense, right? Where it's like, oh, your life was gonna fall apart, but to like fight against it, to fight in, against the inevitable, dare I say, is what it is to be alive. I mean, that, that's the lived experience, right? Every day you're fighting against the inevitability of death. Every time you take a breath, every time you eat a snack, you're fighting against the inevitability of death. So it's kind of like that, but fate. Strumming that tense thread. And it, man, that's interesting because Liliana is, I already said that, right? But like, it's connected to the weaving of fate, but it's also connected to music, right? So strumming the thread and then also like, I feel like some other lines connected it to music, but maybe I'm tripping. Um, at least that, strumming's enough. Strumming's enough to connect it to music, which I quite like. But yeah, um, that's what I call living. Sing a song, there we go. Sing a song for an unyielding hope. So, you know, weaving, songwriting, living. Love it, good stuff, right? It's very positive. It's very like, it's such a positive thing, right? Where it's, 
we're weaving together the light, you know? Um, so that everything makes sense without realizing it. This is a crazy line, but we were being chosen. We thought we were choosing to move forward, but we were being chosen. I mean, that's just like so true for the entire show, right? Like Subaru was getting basically controlled by Roswell for a really long time. So like every time he's dying and returned by death and choosing to move forward despite that, he thought that he was moving forward, but he wasn't really moving forward. He was being chosen by Roswell. He was being influenced, right? So the thoughts he thought he was making were really somebody else pulling the strings. So that's been very true for Subaru as a character this entire time. Um, you can also connect that probably to like Satela to Subaru to some degree, right? That like he thinks he's moving forward by return by death, by keeping people alive, by keeping people together, blah, blah, blah. But in reality, it's not that he's moving forward as much as Satela's freaking, you know, puppeteering shit or something, right? Um, yeah, so that that's fair. That's a, that's a very important line, right? Merging trials, the witch, the, the trials of from Echidonia in uh, season two. That kind of feels like something there. Yeah, a little mini reference, but honestly, I mean, freaking every life for Subaru is a trial because he just suffers. Reflecting perfectly, even in the eyes of thousands, even in the beautiful starry sky, the era unravels and collapses. Yet still, we wo we wove tomorrow. Wove right the weaving of the the strands of fate. Um, yet still is a really big line. Or like fragment, right? Because it's it's despite that. That's the that's the unbreakable human spirit thing I was talking about, right? Shit falls apart, goes wrong, but still we fight on, right? It's a very hopeful song. It's very hopeful, even if it's eleven dimensions, even if it's beyond anything that I can even understand. I'm still going to do it, you know. Um, fate intersecting with destiny, the whole vertical thread and the horizontal. Even if weak, we still stand and face it. Shapes who am I, the will to be one. This is, the, okay, this is a really big line. The thin prayer I kept believing in is none other than resolve. Because prayer, well, kind of reminds me of that line from Rem that I, that I read earlier in uh, looking at season two. But it's like, prayer is external, right? It's I pray to something. And so to realize that like, the prayer that I was believing in, that like things would be okay, you know, the prayer of hope, I feel like would be what the prayer is. That hope isn't something external. It's my inner resolve that like me making the prayer that things will be okay. That's resolve. So it's not this external thing I'm praying to. It's an internal will to live. Or what did she say? Will the will to be one, right? So it's a big part of that internal like drive. Um, sing a song for unyielding hope. Dang, this is such a Subaru moment unyielding hope i will weave the future that is such a subaru thing was i being was i i thought i was moving forward but really i was being chosen i was being you know satela has chosen me R roswell was you know puppeteering me um yada 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 but still i'm going to try to weave my own fate and that's my like unending hope and resolve that shit inspiring bro okay um pull up the episode again ed time ed time so, okay, so we're, we're spending three hours on every single one of these episodes. Um, that's not good. <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> okay, ED. ED analysis. Bro, I literally have something to go to in half an hour. I'm, I'm almost two hours into the recording. I thought I'd already be done by now. What is going on, man? I'm gonna be late. Okay. Um, that was just everything going wrong. Yeah, okay. Liliana all. Dang, all got some giant scars. Ow. Felix legs, Felix legs, the things I would do. Okay, this is mostly like slice of lifey a little bit. Freaking Mimi. You Mimi got too many hops, bro. Go join the NBA. I also have the, the, the lyrics for the uh, this song that we'll look at. Bleeding flowers. Okay, what type of flower is this? Is this an orchid? Oh boy. All right, is this an orchid? Uh, I don't think so. It's too dark to be an orchid. 
I can I can show you real quick what an orchid looks like. This looks like an or this is an orchid, so purpley, but no, this is way darker. Um, let me see if I can find this. It's purple, purple orchid. No, it, it kind of looks like an orchid. Nah, it's it's different. It's different. Like like I can show you I can show you what I'm talking about just to prove that I like I'm not crazy. Um, it's similar but not quite. It's more of a blue. I'm just wondering if there's a significance. Blue, blue. It's like a cupped flower. Cupped flower. Um, kind of looks like this, but I'm not seeing a name of this flower. <laughs> Is this the name of the flower? Sorry, I'm getting so distracted. Is this a Gentilia Calusi? Chat. Is this a Gentilia Calusi? It kind of looks like a Gentilia Calusi. Look at this. Look at this. Gentilia Calusi. Gentilia Calusi. Blue. It's kind of similar. Is there a significance to a Gentilia Calusi? Uh, significance. Uh, wait! Okay, wait! I think it's actually... Okay, this might be cooking. This might be cooking. Gentian flowers are often associated with victory, justice, and determination, and are sometimes called the flower of victory because of their upward-facing shape. So, the bleeding flower is the determination dying, which is like the bad ending. Wait! The Clusius is gentian. I'm right? Wait, did I actually just cook? I might have just cooked, chat. I might have absolutely just cooked right now. Oh my goodness. I think this might be it. Did I find the flower? Chat, I think I found the flower. It looks a little different, but it's really close because it doesn't have like, mo it only has one stem where these ones have like five. But if this is supposed to be the flower of victory and it's bleeding, that is super relevant to Subaru right now and to everything right now. And super relevant to the OP, which was all about hope determination, right? And this is the, the flower of determination dying. Oh my goodness. What is that? Okay, this is just somebody that's dead. Okay, okay. Who is this? I. I can't even I can't even tell which direction this person is. Is that a is that a breast right there? I don't even know what I'm looking at, bro. It's just probably a dead guard. After we got like massacred by a witch cult. The dragon. Sirius is chilling. I'm telling you, anytime a flower shows up in fiction, you gotta be on that. Flowers are lit. And before it was the wrong flower. Nope, it's my new headcanon. I like this shot of Regulus, bro. Regulus is interesting to me. This shot go hard. Their lighting is so good in this ED, bro. I love the lighting. Ooh, her little grin. Okay. I want to know more about this girl. Why she got giant Pokeballs on her booty? Is that a Giotta or are those just Pokeballs? Man, Gluttony has such an, such an emphasis on water and reflections. Because of the twinning, it seems, right? Because, I mean, this is Gluttony right here. On water, we've seen before in the blood reflection in the OP, that's where the twin was. So, really big there. Reinhardt is just permanently smiling. <laughs> Subaru got his whip. <laughs> is this supposed to be Regulus? Why does Regulus look so like... It is. Regulus, what happened to you, brother? It looks like Regulus is... Is Regulus going to be humanized? He looks like he might be humanized. And then Super dies. This this splatter of blood is extremely reminiscent of OP1 in season one, where it's like he gets gutted and the blood splats. So it's I think it's a rep it's obviously returned by death, but I, it might be a reference to OP1. This is so great, bro. It's Reinhardt picking him up, but it's like it's like Otto, Garfield. Uh, Mimi, maybe Anastasia, Amelia. It's everybody, bro. Yeah. Squad goals. We got the entire posse behind us now. And that's what motivates him to step forward back into the blood, back into return by death, back into pain and suffering, to weave together his fate, bro. Hmm like a planning thing. What is going on with these crystals? I mean, this is the city. 
I like how the window, the window's got like a cross on it too. It's very targeted. It's very scary. It looks like a target reticule. reticule. Dang. Okay. Um, ED lyrics now. ED lyrics now. This is their, this is their Myth and Royd freaking, I love Myth and Royd, by the way. This is their, um, because of Made in Abyss, shout out Made in Abyss, and the Made in Abyss reaction series. Oh, two plugs in a video? That's crazy. Um, but yeah, this is the English lyrics, or captions. Yeah, English. Um, I'll do a clean watch of this, and then we will look at the lyrics if I want to. Oh, it's an entire music video. Bro, I'm reacting to music videos now? What's going on? What is going on? <laughs> Man, I might make this a separate video. The lyrics here. Okay, connecting dots one by one. Shoulder to shoulder, here we come. Very fitting so far. Them all lined up, linked arms. Hope, hope metaphor. That's English, I didn't even hear that when I was listening. Ooh, that was clean. Oh, this is weird. Weird video, I like it. Our lives are now become one sound with a common goal. Yeah. Okay, very, the lyrics are very similar to the OP lyrics. But more of a focus on us coming together to do that, right? And it's still, again, the sound metaphor, right? The song in OP, in the OP. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, I like, never be afraid of your weakness. Good line. <laughs> Unite to keep our beliefs alive. Connecting dots reminds me of the weaving of the fate, you know? Okay. What fire will trust you? Ooh, that's creepy. That's weird. Promise to keep. We got a lot of promises in, in ReZero, bro. Oh, it's kind of like Return by Death. Low key, she just returned by death, bro. Laying on the ground, opening her eyes twice in the same video. Low key, that's a Return by Death. Looking for sunrise, hope. Yeah. Guitar solo? They loving these guitar solos, bro. This is a fun music video too. I quite like the music video. This dude, they did they're doing return by death. They're actually doing return by death right now. That's so funny. The clock resetting and the weird effect on the screen as she falls and then comes back. That's gotta be it, bro. That's so fun. Yeah. Ooh, quiet mode. Crystals within us are bright, unbreakable human spirit type. Man, they're jumping in and out of the English really cleanly, bro. So it's it's like super similar to the OP, but it's I think so it's so much more about coming together to do it and being united to do it, which they they touched on in the OP, but that's like the full message of this one. 
which is lit. And uh, man, it works so well with the, the ED visuals. Like, can you imagine hearing like, let us unite? She's saying like, let us unite, let us come together right here. Yo, that goes so hard. That goes so hard. So the, the ED visuals, I think, fit with the ED lyrics really well. All about like coming together. And like, all of us believe in a better tomorrow. Let the sound of our pounding hearts unite in a drum fury. Boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean? That type shit. A beautiful bell ringing. Okay, I like that. I like that. I like that. The OP, the OP real... I like, I like the OP a lot. I like the OP a lot. I like the ED too. All right, let's not put shame on the ED, all right? I love them bleeding flowers, but the OP lyrics really, 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 really cooked for me. Both were good though. Both were really good. Um, go, to the, go to the OP and ED. Okay, episode itself. Um, I really did not expect to have to, or to be going this long, but hey. Happens to the best of us. Uh, this was horrible. I already talked about how like scary and horrible that was with uh, Subaru. Um, yeah, I, like, I kind of want to reread what he was thinking. Because we got a lot of his internal thoughts when he was dying. Everything I see scares me. Darkness still scares me so much. My body's frozen. What, what, oh, it's going so fast. The whole world is made of fear. Fear alone is the truth of this world, and it is needed in order to know the value of life. Ooh, 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 that's pretty good. That's pretty good. The value of life is made clear by the uh, presence of fear. I mean, that's a, that's one of those like suffering is necessary in order to make the good visible, right? That you need the dark in order to appreciate the light. He's, he's like, that's his way of coping with fear right now that he's like, oh, fear is the truth of the world. All that there is is fear. We fear starvation, so we eat. We fear death, so we, we fight or flight, you know? We fear being alone so we connect, that we're all motivated by like not wanting some not wanting something, and so that's why we fight for its opposite, something like that. Um and that is where like the value of life comes from. I mean, it's interesting that like he's having such a like meltdown of like of terror. He's having a terror like panic right now. Um, but that, that is giving him some like knowledge of of the value of life or something like that. Trembling in fear like this is human. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. He's like, he's like, ration, he's like, ration, reconciling. He's reconciling with this absolute terror he's feeling like pretty well. You know, this is truth. This is how I, this is what is necessary for me to value life. This is human. There's no shame. Of course, such a reaction would be meaningless. It's only a process. But by repeating such thought experiments, can I not fight and defeat the fear that still rules my entire body? He's still fighting back, bro. Can I not defeat this, bro? That's what he's thinking right now. And then he was, okay, then it starts breaking down. Then we start losing it. Then we start losing it. But he fought, wait, he fought that shit for a minute, bro. If not, if it's not possible to fight against this all-consuming fear, then why am I fighting? I feel like it's the continuation of that. Why am I still fighting? Why am I still resisting? And then it just goes full... Oh, he pissed himself. Fair, fair. Subaru, piss yourself, King. Piss yourself. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Everything scares me. Yeah, and then, and then I think he's he's unable to continue his like coping mechanism of like recon reconciling it with like truth of human existence, and it just becomes terror. Right? It stops being ter fear is what makes life valued. I think that is at this point is gone, and it's just fear. Right? That suffering, and that's what she even says. It looks like you've reached your limit. Like no longer is the pain being useful as a means for like inner truth but now it's just pain which is bad at this point pain is has no utility and it's just bad and that's what she's saying it looks like you've reached your limit and then she's like all right you're done you have seen the truth of the world you have seen the importance of fear um now you are broken now you are just terrified and just you are you are broken uh, it's like, it's like he gained knowledge and then he was destroyed by it, you know, something like that. Um, so it's like, okay, you're done. Let's go find Tina. Now he's just whimpering. Oh, that's so horrible. Oh, that's so horrible. Wow. I didn't at all catch in the first, in the, in watching it through that he was like learning something or reconciling with something. And then it hit a, br a breaking point and then it was just gone. 
you know? That's really interesting. Because, like, pain is only good. Like, I hate suffering. Suffering is always bad. That's one of my takes, all right? I really don't like the idea of you need the dark in order to appreciate the light. I think that's stupid, okay? Get that out of here, all right? If I... Would you rather get stabbed once and then loved or loved twice? Dog, just love me twice. I don't need to get stabbed, okay? Like, like I don't need to be suffering in order to appreciate joy. Let me just appreciate joy, you know? I take that as a coping mechanism always, right? And so uh, whenever he's doing this stuff of like, oh, it's needed in order to know the value of life, that's a way to cope with the pain you're going through. And so if you can, like, I think coping with pain in that way is valuable because it's, it gives meaning to your suffering, which is good. Because giving meaning to suffering kneecaps suffering and makes it tolerable, right? Um, but as soon as it is non-meaningful, then it is only destructive, right? Suffering that you cannot give meaning to destroys you. And so the, there's two ways to approach that, right? If suffering with purpose is good, that because that's the idea, right? It's like, oh, he, had, he has given meaning to suffering, therefore he's able to like cope with it. Then a lot of people will think like, oh, well then let's give suffering meaning, you know? You need the dark in order to appreciate the light. I say no, just still get rid of suffering, you know? Like, this is only a coping mechanism for if you are in pain. This doesn't make pain good. Fear alone is the truth of this world and is needed in order to know the value of life. This statement implies that fear is what you need in order to know the value of life. And that makes fear a good thing because value of life sounds important and good. So that makes it so, oh, fear's a good thing. No, 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 no. Fear sucks. He is using this as a rat, as a coping mechanism for the terror he is undergoing. The coping mechanism is good, but that doesn't mean that the pain is good. That's what, let's say that. Fear is not good, but this reconciliation with it, this coping mechanism is good. Uh, and you can see that's like, oh, the coping mechanism itself completely breaks. He hits a point right here. If not, then why, why am I? This is his breaking point. That, this is so great, bro. It's, it's such a, it's such a wonderful, like, um, um, like case study or something. It's a, it's like a, such a wonderful example, metaphor, case study, whatever, on how s coping with suffering works, right? I absolutely, you know, I, I really like what he's saying here, but it breaks. Eventually the suffering will just break through it. So you should never deify, idolize, or allow suffering even if you can cope with it, just get rid of it, okay? Because it's just cope. So yeah, I really, I really like like seeing this. Actually, this is super interesting. Um, it's also genuinely troubling and horrible to watch him go through this. This is like the most traumatic death I've ever seen from him. This sequence. Oh my goodness, losing the fingers is crazy. That was really troubling. Um. But yeah, also Subaru, we can't be running in like this, bro. I, he hasn't died in a long time, but this is some overconfidence. You've got to be, he, but it's crazy. He goes through that and he immediately respawns and is like able to come back quick. He is the comeback king. The problem is that it means that, you know, a lot of these emotions are probably getting bottled up, but like, we can deal with that later. You know what I mean? My goat, my goat, my goat, my goat. Because eventually, I mean, shit's just going to keep getting worse, you know? Um, and so Super is going to have to hit, like, a new stage of enlightenment in, able, in, in, in order to, like, get through this. Uh, I still think the Reinhardt move is the best move. You just have to tell Reinhardt she has an ability that if she dies, she'll kill everyone nearby. You have to get her away from everybody. I think Reinhardt is strong enough to be able to manhandle her out of, out of harm's way. Or kill her in the sky where she's far enough from everybody that her authority can't connect with them. Some shit like that, right? So I do think that this is a, um, that this route is probably still the best route because Amelia fighting her, I mean, even, even, uh, Betty said that Shamak won't work because it's more of a cursor hex as opposed to something else. And so we just can't let her connect with people. Maybe the problem with Reinhardt is the timeline where maybe he cannot get here fast enough to stop her before she's connected with people. And maybe like pulling her far away won't break that connection or something like that. Um, we don't know exactly how this, how this authority works, but I do think that this is a very possible win, win situation. Uh, because, we're, you know, right here, there's a lot of time for Super to tell him exactly what he needs to do. Saying, Reinhardt, she has a brainwash ability, she, and if she dies, she will hurt everybody around her, kill everyone around her, so you have to get her away from everyone. And we have to sever that ability first, before you kill her. 
I feel like Reinhard would be would be able to do that. So, um, that's a, I think that's still a play. Berry, Berry, Berry. I, I'm fine with talking to Betty though, and and ex, you know experimenting a bit as long the thing because the thing is Return by Death is so good as long as Subaru's sanity can hold. I'm fine with him dying. It's the grind set. It's the Roswell grind set from season two. As long as his sanity can hold, I am fine with him dying as much as he wants, you know? And that's kind of the, you know, we definitely fought back against that that mindset in a lot of ways because if you go too far in it, then your sanity breaks, I think, right? You can't go full grind set, but the grind set I still like. You just got to be careful. You got to check yourself. So yeah, um, I'm fine with him doing this. It's just like, I want, I, you know, I want him to be efficient with it. Also, I love Amelia. Just this was kind of a move too. Immediately, just trying to one shot her. Yeah, if 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 this killed her, it would have worked. Like if that killed her, that would have been great. Yeah. He still has his whip, super, and his goofy little ah uh, uh, his goofy ah uh, ah uh, whip. Yeah, it's spiritual interference closer to a curse or hex than a spell. Shamak will be useless. Brutal. But yeah, um. This whole situation, Sin Archbishop of the Witch Cult was re representing Wrath, just taking him, you homewrecker, calling Amelia a homewrecker. Surely that's referential to Subaru, though, if you want to go down the Sirius is Fortuna mindset, um, which would be really interesting, especially considering that translation that we heard where, like, she was kind of, she was, like, uh, um, insulting the traits of Amelia's that are connected to Fortuna. Uh, Maybe that's why she's fully bandaged up, is that she's like got some sort of like self-hate going on or something. I don't know. But at least the uh her like like her calling Amelia a homewrecker, it's either referencing Subaru, in which case it's a like Satela type situation a little bit, or it's representing Beetle Goose in some way. But I don't know exactly what that would be. I mean that's weird. Saying that like because like I'm thinking of Amelia's backstory, they were kind of like it was like Fortuna and Beetle Goose, and then like Amelia was like kind of in like their it was kind of their kid in a way, you know, in like the dynamic where it kind of felt like a parental dynamic, though obviously that wasn't what was going on exactly. Um, and so maybe that's like the homewrecker situation in some kind of way. That's like, but that's like kind of a stretch. That really is kind of a stretch. I feel like it's got to be Subaru, yeah. Um. I mean, did you explicitly say um, taking him away from me? The stench of filthy, infuriating half devil who would take him away from me? I smell it. I smell it. I smell the girl. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm going to burn you alive and scatter your ashes over my husband's grave. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Husband's grave. So, uh, Beetle Goose, yeah? Um. Yeah, just gotta be Beetle Goose. So, but, but, yeah, it's gotta just be Beetle Goose then. Um, <laughs> it's so funny how different Amelia and Sirius are here. Amelia is just, it's just like, these other people have nothing to do with it. And she's just like holding a stoic face while Sirius is screaming, I'm going to cook you through your intestines right through your ass. I'll cook your intestines right through your ass. Yeah, that's kind of intense. And she's just like, ah, uh, I'll humor. You know what I mean? <coughs> um, yeah, the overflowing passion is the joy. Trembling, trembling is a very Beetle Goose line or word. Hmm. It's so weird because she has silver hair. You know, she has the same eyes, very similar eyes. So it's it's like it feels like self-loathing in a way, you know. It's that's what's so weird about this, bro. Oh man, that belongs to me. He gave it to me. Yeah. Okay. Last thing I'll kind of be saying here. Last thing I'll kind of be saying here. So like, angry, angry. You are angry. Don't be ridiculous. That belongs to me. I mean, she's the Archbishop of Wrath. She's like, uh, you, you aren't allowed to be angry. I like that, how, like, conceptually, the Archbishop of Wrath is being told, by, like, like, Amelia's saying, hey, Archbishop of Anger, I'm mad at you. It's like, well, that's ironic. Like, that's kind of her territory, you know? So, 
it kind of puts her up in like a thematic way to lose when she's trying to claim when Amelia's trying to claim wrath to wrath. You know, it's like whether it, you're preaching to the choir a little bit. You know, this shot went hard too, bro. All this like fire shit. Um, it does show maybe, and that this is maybe why Sirius is so burnt is because her wrath seems to be fiery. She's talking about like burning, burning her to ash or something like that. Um, I'll cook your intestines, right? So wrath has like a fire element that she also has. So it looks like she has two abilities, minimum at least, right? That it's either that it's this fire thing. Maybe that's why she's burnt, as well as the empathy thing, which is really fun. I mean, fire. Think about what fire does. Fire. You throw things into a fire, it burns those things, and they all become part of the flame. That's what fire does. It's 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 all consuming, but it's also like all unifying, right? It conjoins everything within itself as fire, you know? So like interpreting fire itself really works well for like an empathy or wrath situation. So I really like that. I really like that. It's, that's just one of my favorite things about the show is how they characterize the different sins. It's so fascinating. Um, and then Regulus is like, all right, she's going to be my 79th wife. So that's crazy. I mean, you kind of saw her when she was like a child way back. So it's kind of crazy to be like, yeah, I'm going to wife you. But you know what, Regulus? That's just a Gilgamesh moment. I'll let it slide, I guess. I don't know about letting it slide, but you're, I mean, you're literally the Archbishop of Green, all right? I'm not going to like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not going to be like, like, try to get you on that. You're already the Archbishop of Greed. You're already a problem. But yeah, okay. Um, really goaded episode. Tell me how did this recording last longer than the season one, episode one recording that was an hour and a half episode? This was 20 minutes. How was this a longer recording for me? It's probably going to be shorter for y'all because I'm going to edit a bunch out, but my goodness, we're back in the ReZero, baby. Okay, episode two. Episode three is next, next week. I'm excited for that. Of course, of course, of course. If you like the video, like the video. Subscribe if you are new, blah, blah, blah. Comment down below if you have anything to say or join the Discord and talk to me or the ReZero fans there. All links in the description. Patreon's also there too. I never talked about that. If you want the pip, you know what I mean? But until then, until the next episode, that is all I got for tonight. I will be seeing you then. Peace.